Um, you know, I think for an American kid growing up in the 19, you know, late 70s and early 80s, I, I got a fair amount of cultural education. But, you know, of course, it was within the context of the little town that I was living in. So I grew up in a suburban um, town, like, right outside of Boston. So not, like, in the middle of nowhere by any means, but not... You know, not in the middle of New York City with the Met there and, you know, street performers there and, like, everything happening around me. Um, but my schools, our public schools, did, did a great job. I mean, looking back, they could have done nothing. And we had great art classes and great music classes. And there was a little community center where I learned pottery and ceramics and you know, painting, and there was a little, you know, place where I went to dance classes, and a little place where I went to drama classes, and my high school had a fantastic theater department, and I took all of that for granted. You know, I really did get the sense, as someone who was really artistically bent, that it was, it was a viable thing to be interested in. I love it. I have always been a big fan of putting music in uh, lesser expected venues. <laughs> that is like what I've been doing all my career is playing music in places where you don't usually uh, have music. So I love this, it's fantastic. I think we should be making music in every space that could possibly fit people. Churches, libraries, basements, kitchens, bathrooms, hospitals, hotels, bunkers, prisons, hair salons clothing shops, candy stores, what's left, bookstores, supermarkets, black holes. <laughs> One of my favorite was playing in the uh, Carillion of the Australian government capital, Canberra. Do you know what a Carillion is? Because I didn't. Yeah. A Carillion is a tower with a bunch of bells in the top that you play like a giant keyboard. So it's like a it's like a 10 foot keyboard that you play with your fists like a big oversized piano. And it's it's like four stories in the air and you take a lift up. And these bells sound all over Canberra and I showed up with a bunch of punk rock like bike anarchists called Rat Patrol because they wanted to do a spontaneous Amanda Palmer bike ride. And that's where they took me. And then it turned out that they knew the old lady who had the key <laughs> to the Carillion. And it was during a lightning storm. But right before the lightning started, I got, like, and the light rain was coming down, I got keyed up and I played Coin Operated Boy to the city of Canberra in the, in the Carillion. I mean, I think I would say your, your ideas aren't crazy. And don't let anyone tell you that you're crazy for wanting to be an artist or a musician or that it's far-fetched, or that it's vain, or that it's ridiculous. And I mean, we're such a strange group of people because look at what we, look at what we worship and obsess about. You know, we're like obsessed with celebrity culture and, you know, on the one hand, we look at whatever the band is, like from the Beatles to, you know, to whatever is on television right now or Taylor Swift, and, and it's totally fine in the minds of most, you know, sort of conservative cultural people for that to be happening and to tune into the radio and to listen to music and have that stuff in their environment. And then there's a real double standard because if it's your kid who wants to be that musician and would prefer to study music or would prefer to be in a band or would prefer to pursue art, um, why is it crazy? Someone has to make the art. You know, and why not your child or, or you?